This is Racing to Win, Hong Kong Racing's twice weekly preview show. We've got uh, 10 races coming up before you on Sunday afternoon at Sha Tin. The main event is race number eight to the Look Fook Jewellery Cup. It is class two over 1,000 metres set down for 435. Great to have your company here on the show this week. I'm Tom Wood, uh, joined by Paul Lally and Nick Child in the studio to uh, dissect all of the action. And Nick, uh, it might be a cold day at Sha Tin mm. Sunday, but a uh, good card, a couple of races on the all weather also. Yeah, absolutely, Tom. I think it will be a little bit chilly. Actually, the forecast is certainly predicted that but uh, yeah look some nice racing uh, coming up and well thankfully Paul Lally's here to go through all the uh, the newcomers for which there are plenty. There are Paul we had a number of newcomers the other week we've got a whole host of them again I think a couple of them might come up reasonably short. Yeah they could well do this though some of them are trial well as you say there's about a hundred thousand of them in this particular meeting there's plenty of them there races six and ten also we're going to put a million uh, dollars into the uh, first four and quartet merge pool. So a couple of good jackpots as well. Yep, there are certainly us. So we'll make sure you are tuned into all the action for Shartin on Sunday, 1 p.m. The first race. A few scratchings to note as well. And the first of them is race two, number one, Good Runner. He's been off the scene for some time, but he is scratched. So United We Stand gets in. He's got 10 pounds off his back with Angus Sir Chung. Stradale comes out of race six, horse 12, and he has been replaced by Luke Curry aboard Dragon Delight. And also out of the main event, race eight, you can take out six Sunny Boy. So Sunny Boy comes out of that race for Chris So. Let's have a look at the details of four Sunday's card at Sha Tin. We're on here from the 12.30 and the first uh, race we're going to preview is race number six. Two race on the all weather and the other eight on the turf out in the C plus three position. Race six, uh, the uh, class three 1200 metres and the class two 1000 metres race eight, which is the Look for Jewellery Cup, the main event at Sha Tin. Class 3, 1200 metres for race number 6. So here's the lineup. We've got Beauty Charge lining up here for Tony Cruz at the top with Luke Ferraris. He is second up for the season. Party Warrior, Keith Young and Francis Lloyd. Kate Breton is up for his third run of the season. Bundle of Charm is resuming off a, a little fresh up, has trialled well. Not usual stars, a newcomer. He was Yulong Code with Peter Moody, and Capital Legend was trained in Australia by John Sadler prior to arriving. Like that, so therefore, Derek Lung, Beauty Turn, another newcomer in the race for Pierre Ung, and so he raced overseas in Australia, also did Beauty Turn. You know, Pulsar Strider there, Stoicism, Dream Pursuer, another newcomer in the race for Razak Purton and Manfred Mann. He did have a couple of runs in Australia prior to arriving and uh, further down Dragon Delight. Let's have a look at the speed map for this sixth event on the programme. And as we see them go from the start here, Nick Beauty Turner has shown a bit of pace from what we've seen of him overseas. He led all of the way to a win there in Australia. What about him here first up? Yeah, well, look, he's shown pace in that trial too, hasn't he? Um, uh, last time out when running fourth. So he's more than likely to go forward. He's drawn gate number three as well. So he'll find himself in a really good spot. Pulsar Strider uh, could be an interesting one. They actually went forward with him or closer uh, to the pace last time out when he, he drew gate six. He's in eight, so he'll come across one or two, but uh, they were prominent with him. And Bundle of Charm, now he could be the interesting one because he's drawn one and he has shown speed in the past. And um, just recently, he hasn't been as far forward, but I reckon he might be this time, Paul. Yeah, I agree. I think they'll make use of that uh, draw after the um, freshen up. And look, he's an alternative leader as well. I think Capital Legend will have to go back from his wide draw. Radio, so that is the speed for race number six. Uh, horse that uh, ran very well first up here in Hong Kong was uh, Kate Breton. We can hear from his uh, jockey, and that is Antoine Hamlin. He spoke to Nick down at the track on Friday morning. Antoine Hamlin, Kate Breton is one of your rides this weekend, and that was a, a really impressive debut performance from him, Antoine. Yeah, um, a bit surprised for the first day with him. Uh, we decided to ride him quietly, and he gave me a very nice, strong finish. Uh, so I was very, very happy about this performance. I hope he will repeat it. Absolutely. I mean, he was at a huge price, of course, on that occasion. And did he sort of surprise you with the manner in which he sort of travelled and finished off? Or, or had, had the, you and the team sort of fully expected that? Uh, I, I don't have the electro road in the morning, so I don't even really know how is it. Uh, but because of the draw last time, we, we decided to ride him quickly. This time we have a better draw, small field, so... I guess if we can be midfield he, with the same finish, he can be very competitive. Given that he's won a couple of times over 14 in Australia, as you say, he has got a better draw. Do you think perhaps he is a horse that could be ridden that bit more positively? Yeah, no, I, I will not say very positive, but just a little bit more positive than last time should be enough to, to finish a bit closer. He is a four-year-old. Obviously, there's always plenty of hype around the, the four-year-olds. I mean, he's obviously got a, a little bit still to, to go, but 
he's arrived on a decent sort of mark. Do you think he's the type that might be able to mix it with some of the better ones? Yeah, I think 12 shoots him well. Uh, maybe his kind of softs need to be off the pace a bit, and uh, that's what he needs to finish strongly. Uh, he, ma he made it really well last time on 12, so I will say stick on it. He just looks a really nice improver, doesn't he? I suppose if he can build on that debut debut performance. Yeah, exactly, and I'm pretty sure he improved a lot on the last race. He, he gets some confidence for sure, so let's see what he can do. Yeah, so it was a good, strong performance uh, there from uh, that horse on debut, uh, Paul. But did he get the speed to suit in that race uh, with all that pace up front? Did that maybe flatter him a little? He, he did get the, the, the pace to suit, I think. He was a big prize, so there was no support from early, 87 to 1. 86 to 1. He won't be that uh, coming up on uh, Sunday. Uh, second up, he'll be fitter, but he did win over 1,400 metres overseas. Yeah, and I think having spoke to Antoine, it seemed as if their plan would be to try and be that bit more prominent on him. So maybe they'll just try and take a little bit of bad luck out of the equation. OK, so that's uh, the verdict from the gents uh, there on uh, Cape Breton. We can move on to a beauty charge uh, now. He's only had uh, one run this uh, campaign, Nick, and he ran ninth. He was beaten five and three quarters. He looked a, a little one pace there, I thought, but I didn't think the trial was all that bad. No, not, not at all. Um, fourth here around Happy Valley. I, I thought, look, he's closed off OK. I think coming back in trip might just suit him here. I mean, he, he did win second up when beating Smart Idea last season. That was over 1,200 metres, Paul. Yeah, exactly. He's just got to carry the weight. He's got the top weight here of 133, hasn't he, uh, to carry from uh, Barrier 7. So we'll see if he can get a good, nice run from that. Yep, Luke Ferraris uh, riding there for uh, Tony Cruz. So we can now have a look at uh, Bundle of Charm. Now, here he is on the far side on this uh, barrier trial. Uh, Paul, he sort of went off the ball a little bit in his last uh, couple of runs. What about the, the weight gain as well? He's put on 20 pounds. Yeah, look, I, he looks OK for that weight gain, I thought. Uh, as you say, he, he, they rate him a little bit uh, further back in this particular trial but from barrier one I think they'll be positive and when he did win his race he led all the way and he won impressively. He did and um, I think maybe coming back to Chartin's going to suit as well I mean his run at Happy Valley wasn't the worst but he does seemingly look better suited here. There are a number of newcomers in this uh, race as uh, well and uh, one of them is uh, Beauty Turn uh, as well as uh, Not Usual Star first of all and Not Usual Star he's coming into with us here with uh, the hood and the tongue tie on he's had a fetlock injury since arriving and Nicky won uh, four races from 13 starts with Peter Moody. Yeah, 12 and 1300 metres. Look, I thought I thought this trial was OK. He's, he's done this quite nice. He won a couple over in, uh, in Chung Far as well. And he's actually a half-brother, Paul, to Quick Thinker, who was a handy horse. Yeah, well, very good horse. So, 1,047 pounds from barrier number two. I'm going to include him, because I haven't met, uh, minded his trial there. Yeah. Yeah, son of uh, Zoo Star, so mm. he looks uh, interesting here. He's had four trials in total. Three of them have been up at uh, Chungfa. We can look at Capital Legend now, another newcomer, a four-year-old by Capitalist uh, here, a nick out of a, a Tavistock Khmer. Uh, ran fourth in the Carbine Club Stakes at Flemington prior to arriving. Another one that's had issues with a uh, suspensory injury. He has, yeah, and, and also actually going through um, his record in Australia, he also um, had a suspensory injury there after his debut, so maybe just tread a little bit carefully with him. But look, his trials have been OK, um, but I'd sooner just watch him go round first time yeah, also from that wide draw, just worries me a little bit. He's got Barry number 12, so a little bit tricky. And he's still a maiden. Uh, has four races in Australia, uh, his best. He did run second at Mooney Valley and then ran fourth in that uh, Group 3 race. So, But hasn't yet to win yet. Yeah, all of his trials up at uh, Chungfa as well for uh, Casper Founds and Vincent. So how I referenced uh, Beauty Turn before, who's uh, lining up from the Pierre Unger barn. And here he is uh, leading all of this, uh, all the way in the, the trial here, uh, Paul. And uh, looked OK. Wasn't really asked for too much in the straight, I thought. No, I, no and uh, look, when he did win, uh, he was called Yulong Code, as you said earlier on, when he did win in uh, Australia, he, he went straight to the front, he's by star turn, we've seen that progeny do quite well up here, and uh, we'll go to the front here as well. Look, he didn't quite make it in for me, but he was on the cusp, I looked at him. Yeah, look, he's, he's obviously of interest, isn't he? His win at Barnsdale was very good, he wore blinkers on that occasion, wears a visor here, and just knocked up a little bit late in that trial, but again, he, he could be a nice horse for the future. Yep, De Souza rides from a Barrier 3. De Souza had a great night on Wednesday night at Happy Valley with three winners. So one more to look at, and this is another newcomer by the name of Dream Pursuer for Manfred Mann and Zach Purton. Another one that's had an injury since arriving, a right for humorous injury here. Nick won two races at Wangaratta and Bendigo. Yeah, look, and he's been unraced here for, for a year, but you couldn't be more than pleased with this trial. He's, he's jumped out well, nice and cleanly, travelled powerfully, and 
he's uh, he's gone to the line really well. So, yeah, look, he's a very interesting horse, Paulie. I mean, he's a five-year-old, and, and we know Manfred can produce one first up. Yeah, and look, he's uh, Zach Purden aboard as well. So there's some positives there about him. Another one I've included, I've liked his trolls. They've been very patient with him. Yeah, they have been. He was uh, trained by uh, Rod uh, Simons prior to uh, arriving. Now, here's a very loose-looking list of uh, some of the four-year-olds we've got uh, here in Hong Kong where they're rated at. So there's a couple of pages here. Paul Keefe, of course, at the top. He's secured a place if he wants to go to the four-year-old series, which I think they certainly are going to go with. But there's a few with question marks as well and some we haven't seen yet also. Yeah, exactly. And Keefe's got that magical 100, but you sort of seem to need to, um, to win uh, a, a, like a, a derby. A pal, he's interesting because he ran really impressively two starts ago. A little bit disappointing. And Tuchel's on the comeback trail as well. He's been galloping well recently. Yeah, one I didn't mind on that first page was Packing Treadmill. I think he's a lovely horse. But some of these a little bit further down have probably got a little bit to, to do. But yeah, we saw Gallant Waking run in the week and he acquitted himself well. And he might go up and trip again still. Yeah, certainly. That was only a list of horses, basically 17 above. There might have been a few missing there, but there's sort of a, a rough list of for what's coming up in the next few weeks as we head towards the four-year-old series, which kicks off at the end of January. OK, Paul, quite an interesting race. Number of newcomers. Do any make it into the top four? Yeah, two of them actually uh, do make it into my top four. I'm going to go with um, a horse called Pulse Strider here. Uh, I just really liked his two runs to date. The second last time, he just got pipped on the line uh, by Solar Winds. He did get the race run to but you could see him tiring at the line so I think I just wonder if uh, with those two runs now he'll strip fitter bundle of charm coming out of that good trial dream pursuer a trial winner a uh, first starter here as is not usual talent and not usual star I should say not not usual talent did race here nine four eleven and five for me yeah I've gone the same form race as Paul there but I've gone with the horse that ran third finishing off strongly that's Kate Breton who I think will certainly come on a bit like Pulse Strider for racing and um, I thought that was a really decent turn of foot that he showed to, to quicken up nicely so uh, they might just be a bit closer with him this time and I think he's a really nice horse going forward. Pulsar Strider in for second look he's certainly improved from first to second start and he can improve again. I put Dream Pursuer in for third, I really liked his trials and the fact that Zach rides him has got to be a, a plus and the four bundle of charm in as well I think uh, returning to Chartin good draw will possibly lead could suit him 3-9-11-4 and Bundle of Charm has uh, come up uh, the early favourite in the bidding at uh, 2.7 for uh, John Size, his uh, trainer. That's a look at uh, race number six up after the break here on Racing to Win. We'll be highlighting the main event, uh, which is the Look Fook Jewellery Cup at race number eight. But before we go to the break, don't forget you can check out this week's uh, edition of Hong Kong Direct on the website, hkjc.com. Karis uh, Teton, great to have Karis back in the saddle. He's the guest on uh, this week's uh, show, talking about his uh, comeback off the back of that uh, thyroid issue that he has had. Of course, he rode a winner on Wednesday night. Happy Valley in the form of King Ecalente. So on the audio and video section of the website, hkjc.com. More after the break here on Racing to Win. Racing to Win continues and we're looking at the main event for the card at Charton on Sunday afternoon, which is the Look Fook Jewellery Cup, Class 2 over 1,000 metres at 4.35. And uh, there is one defection in the race, and that is Sunny Boy. Trillion winners uh, first up after uh, bleeding it back at uh, his first run at the beginning of the season. Wizkid uh, there, he certainly enjoys uh, 1,000 metres, but he has won at Happy Valley over the 1,000 metres four times, just the one occasion at Charton. Handsome Bobo, Harmony and Rich keep you warm. Many of these horses do perform better at Happy Valley. Classic Unicorn, he's been a speedy horse uh, down through the years, uh, down the course and distance here at Charton. Ping Hai Galaxy, you're my everything. Jumbo Fortune is coming back in trip from 14 to 1,000. Power kept coming back from 12 to the 1,000 metres. He was a winner two starts ago. And Equaletta Blitz is trying course and distance for the fourth time. Antoine Hamlin riding for Douglas White. Uh, should be genuine pace here, and Nick, as they uh, always are, these 1,000 uh, metre races. But uh, Wiz Kids uh, with a 10 pound claim, he's likely to be up on the speed. Yeah, I think so, Tommy. He's only really got the one way of going, and that, and that is to, to go and lead. So he'll jump, he'll run, and uh, he'll certainly give a bold sight for the most part. Uh, Classic Unicorn uh, is a horse who's uh, he's got plenty of pace. He's actually drawn out in once. He'll be more in the, the centre of the track there. Harmony and Rich uh, is another uh, who can show good, uh, good uh, early speed, and, and Hanson Bobo. Um, Paul, he, he's out there in four, so he might just be caught out on the wing a little bit. Yeah, a little bit down the straight. Uh, but you've seen these horses that can get across and win from the inside gates there. Ping Eye Galaxy's got speed. Trillion win, he's coming back to 1,000 metres there after a break.
It certainly is. So we can have a look at uh, a few of the key races here for the Lookfook Jewellery Cup, which is uh, race number eight. We'll start with the Wizkid uh, here. He's up in front, but also in this uh, race, you've got uh, Classic Unicorn, who's uh, down on the inside to there. Equilet of Blitz isn't too far away. Uh, Harmony and Rich Ping High Galaxy are wider in the yellow and the purple. And Handsome Bobo, he's further out on the track here as well, uh, Nick. But Tony Cruz in the media this week saying he's more of a happy valley horse, uh, likes a bend as Wizkid. Yeah, and look, I, I totally get that. I mean, his record here is four from four, and he was dominant, beaten a number of rivals on this occasion. But it's not like he doesn't handle the straight. He has one down the straight. And, I mean, after all said and done, Paul, he's just going in a straight line. And if he's quicker than the others, then he can win. Yeah, exactly. He's, he, as you say, he's won. He's had four goes down the straight, one, one. And been placed in a couple of others. So we know he's going to be in front. It's just as can he hang on? Yeah, here's a recent uh, barrier trial up at uh, Chungfar as well. And uh, here he is uh, up on the, the pace, uh, which is uh, where he does uh, like uh, to be here. Angus uh, Chung, he probably gets a, an opportunity here, Paul, to pick off a, a class two race. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, he's going to, he takes a claim off, which is going to help the horse a lot. He'll come down to 125 pounds, which is a, a good uh, racing um, racing weight for him. And look, he hit the, hit the line nicely. And uh, like it's just whether he can hang on, that's the query. Yeah, absolutely, and um, you know they'll all be trying to, to run him down. But look, I didn't mind this trial. Angus has ridden the horse uh, two starts ago, and he acquitted himself well uh, on his seasonal debut, and he's been riding him in, in the majority of his track work also. So there's enough to like about him, and yeah, I think in this race he, he is the one they've got to beat. And he certainly wasn't asked to for too mm. much in that barrier trial up there at uh, Chungfa back on the 5th of uh, December. Here's his uh, report card, uh, Nick. Uh, 13 starts here in Hong Kong for those uh, five wins, and you can see his Happy Valley record compared to his Sha Tin record. Yeah. Yeah, he's, and he's won over seven million in prize money, and I'm sure he win a bit more as well. He's a he's a super money spinner, and they've certainly had plenty of fun with him. And I think there's more more good days to come. Yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, as you say, if it was a Happy Valley, it'd be a short price favourite, I think. Yep, he certainly would be. He is about on the second line of betting, I think, at this point. Uh, we can move on and have a look at the next of the runners here. And we've got a few of them here also. Classic Unicorn, he's all speed on the inside there. Uh, Ping High Galaxy isn't too far away, but also in this replay, you've got Harmony and Rich, who's there in the red cap. Hanson Bobo, uh, keep you warm in the blue with the, uh, the uh, red star. And then in behind them, uh, no, that's about the last one in fact uh, there as we see them go here classic unicorn he, he's been a, a good horse down the straight in the past Paul but he just he's, he's hit and miss isn't he yeah he's a seven year old now too so he's just getting on towards the end of his career as well you can see him dropping out quite quickly and he's a horse that does like to dominate from the front Hanson Bobo finished off this race well and he's only been down the straight once and just failed uh, it was a really good run from him so I'm going to include Hanson Bobo yeah I think just off Tony's um, article regarding WizKid he said there aren't that many opportunities for some of these horses hence why they all race against each other so um, it's an interesting race given that there's plenty of form tying them all in together and Paul mentioned to Hanson Bobo there that too was his first up assignment uh, down the, the straight here this season. He was he was very good to that last uh, start. Now we've got to Power Kip uh, here. He's on the outside. There was a bit of rain around at uh, Happy Valley uh, this night. Uh, Nick, uh, what about him coming back in trip? Yeah, look, don't, don't mind him actually. Um, I, I know the man sat to my left has always been a big fan, and I can understand why he's he's a course and distance winner in Class Three. Uh, look, this is a Class Two, and it's it's a stronger race on ratings. But that said, I think he might just be able to get away with it here, Paul, and uh, he's a very honest horse. Yeah, look, he's only had two goes down the, the straight. He's won one and been placed in the other, so he does like the straight 1,000. There's going to be plenty of pace uh, on the, in this race, so I think he'll be finishing off strongly. Yep, he should be there for the John Size uh, stable. One more replay to have uh, a look at, and we go back to the trials uh, here, and uh, we're looking at uh, Trillion Win, who's uh, cuddled up between runners uh, in behind them here, and also at the back is You're My Everything uh, here, uh, Paul. You're My Everything, he's won three times 1,200 metres. He's been up to 1,600 and 1,650. I'm not really sure what what's going on here at the moment. Yeah, with him, I think this is a, maybe uh, just a little bit too short for him, pretty sharp for You're My Everything. Trillion win now, he's a bleeder, as, as we've said. Blinkers off, tongue tie goes on. But this is the right time to catch him. He's just got those internal problems. Exactly, and, and obviously, you know, when he's on his, his A game, he can be very good. As for You're My Everything, I mean, Tony Cruz is a genius, but um, he'll pull a rabbit out of the hat here, I think, coming back in trip in a big way. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Trillion win, Paul, he, he's had that bleeding attack in the past, but he has won first up in the, the past, and he has been very good. Uh, here's his record down the straight in terms of times, 55-5-7, but none of them have run fast as Classic Unicorn, but that was in his early career, Classic he, Unicorn. Yeah, he's a seven-year-old now, so he sort of hasn't been running those times recently. As you say, Trillion win can, you can see Powercap as well. He's pretty quick down that straight 1,000. Yeah. Yeah. He 
certainly is uh, right oh we're all said and done here Paul not the strongest class two race uh, going around many of them are happy valley horses mm. many of them probably prefer different trips than what they're getting here so who makes it on top well i'm going to go with power cap because he's had the two starts down the straight a win and a placing we know he's a speedy horse and he's got a good finish on him and he'll get the, the pace to suit whiz kid will be catch me if you can out in front a trillion a win fresh up and a handsome bobo coming back to straight thousand i think it was good i mean it was a really good uh seasonal debut from him 11 2 1 3. Yeah, I've gone with Wizkid here. Um, look, he's just in such great form. That win last time at Happy Valley was dominant. Yes, he's a better horse there, but he has won here over course and distance. And I think with the £10 off, he's going to be a, a big player in this. So he'll go on top. Over Trillion Win, who's a really nice type of horse. Obviously, he's had a bit of a break, get enforced, and he can certainly go well. Power Kip in as well. And Hanson Bobo, the old boy, might just uh, play a part. 2 1 11 3. And he is the favourite in early betting at this point is Wizkid, the speedy horse for Tony Cruz and Angus Chung. Righto, well that's a look at the two main races here on Racing to Win. But apart from that, Paul, there's eight other races to find the winners of. So how can you help us out? Yeah, there's a few first starters amongst them, which I quite like a couple of them. I thought jo Joyful Genius downgraded is ready to win. So uh, in, in race number one, uh, Hero Icon, I've liked his trials. I've liked Cool Blue's trials as well. They're f both first starters. Gang of Brothers has finally got a barrier draw, so he, he'll get his opportunity. Cherry was very good last start as well. Stand Up will be a short price favourite on the all-weather. Uh, Midori Beauty will give him one last chance and accelerando has been going really well this season yep he lines up in the last race for Zach Purton and also at John size out of that list to Paul best value and play please gonna go with cherry I think it was a good run from him last time he's ready to win cherry a uh, one-time winner here in Hong Kong from his eight starts and the value gonna go in one of the first starters Hugh Bowman aboard a horse called cool blue liked his trials coming into this he did try really well in New Zealand before he got here. Frankie Law's got him. And uh, the play of the day will go in race number two. Brave Dreams with the hero icon of first starter and huge win. Another first starter as well. Two, four, six. Yeah, best bet for me uh, comes up in race six. Number three, Kate Bretton. Really, uh, really impressed by his debut performance. Think he can go a few places better. Race five, number three, the long shot, Helene Alibor. He's a decent type on his day. And uh, the play, race seven, number five, stand up to win. For me, in terms of a best bet, it is race three, number seven. Excellent fighter. Hopefully, Jai McNeil can get on the score sheet here. This horse has been trialling well. Ricky, you've purchased him, and he trains him here now in Hong Kong. Race 10, number 10, happy together. He definitely improved from start one to start two last time out. We'll get back from a wide draw and the play with Trillion Win with Kid and Ping High Galaxy. QQP in race eight, one, two, and eight. That is the show. We're looking forward to a good day, Paul. We've got a jewellery show coming up as well uh, Sunday afternoon. Oh, that was good like those jewellery shows and uh, of course nine races back uh, on Happy Valley on Wednesday. There certainly is and uh, I think some of these newcomers are very interesting as well so looking forward to them. Yeah they are uh, certainly interesting many of those uh, newcomers who have been trialling well either here in Hong Kong but they've also trialled well overseas many new horses that have raced overseas also going around. First race 1pm from Sha Tin on Sunday afternoon we're live with the coverage from 12.30 enjoy your Sunday at Sha Tin.